What's up guys, Dapper here, and we're back with another video. Today, I want to show you a pretty cool piece of art I made. And yeah, we can call it art. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and get off our seat here and go check this out. So what I made is an infinity cube. And uh, if we just hit the start button here, you can kind of see how it works. And look at that. Oh, wait. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> so... Basically, it just continuously kind of folds itself around. Now, this is a little bit different than an actual infinity cube. Uh, I discovered while making that, that an actual infinity cube uh, is actually not quite possible to make. And uh, I'll show you guys what I mean in a little bit. But here it is in all of its glory. <laughs> you can see it flipping around. So this would be a pretty cool piece of art, you know, to have in like a base or something. So if you see down here, this is kind of the mechanisms that are making it function. So I got like a little arm down here on a rotor. And then I have two hinges at uh, 45 degree angles. So that the cube uh, can be on a angle. So if we actually stop it here. Oh, right. <laughs> Got to hit it twice. So you can see the cube, uh, you know, is, is on its side or it's on, on the, the points. The points are going up and down and that's because of these guys here. So if I just flip both these switches, you can see, well, it goes kind of crazy. <laughs> so let me turn those back on. Uh, that one was only going crazy because it's going like a full 180 or something like that. Oh, let's... Oh, please, don't uh, don't crash on me. We'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> okay. So, uh, where were we at? So that's that's the uh, the hinges that are helping me get this angle. And then I also put it on a rotor. Now, I really wish the developers would add, like, uh, a, a rotor that would constantly spin. Uh, and maybe you could control the speed of it, but unfortunately that's not in the game right now So the rotors can only go 180 or 360 degrees So that is why I have it hooked up to this little logic sequence here. That'll have it turn Oops, we just gotta turn that off uh, It'll turn 360 and then it'll turn back around and do another 360 so you can see that there. So the, the little logic sequence I have set up is a, uh, a four second timer. So every four seconds it resets. So each turn is uh, just right on four seconds, pretty much. And then I have an OR and a NOR gate, and these are wired in a loop connected to the switch. So every time this switch is off, uh, these will continue to run. So that's that. So if we turn this off, I can show you the other portion of this. Actually, I might have done that too soon. Let's turn those back off. So I like to do these two seconds apart so you can actually see one, two. See each step of their change. Because there's two ch there's uh there's two phases of this. So there's two sets of hinges moving in order to get this effect. So we have we have this stage here and then this stage. So if I click this button here, those four cubes uh, move. So I could have all these connected to one since they are moving at the same time, but I have an idea that I might do later where I will have these go at separate times. It might look a little bit cooler. I'm not sure. And then our second stage is here. So if we alternate these, you can see we get the alternating stages of the infinity cube. So, uh, so this isn't set up just like an infinity cube. Uh, with an infinity cube, normally it would um, it would do a different type of fold for this right here. So a normal infinity cube doesn't do that, but that's, um, maybe I'll show you how an actual infinity cube works. Uh, but in this game, it's actually not possible to do 
because when you're hooking everything up to the hinges, oh, don't mind this hinge here. This one's kind of useless, but this was uh, my prototype, and um, I tried deleting this, but it ends up deleting half the cube. So uh, uh, I didn't feel like going back and remaking the whole thing. So, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? So uh, when, you, when you hook up all these squares to each other, basically you have to start uh, with, I guess, a base square. And if you were to connect them all in a way, it would eventually get back to the original square, which you can't actually do. Um, I don't know, I might come up with a different design, but also the uh, the sides flipping out is actually a pretty cool touch, I think. It actually looks a bit cooler than a regular Infinity Cube. So, uh, let's actually see how this looks if I offset these. We'll do 0.5 here. One second here, 1.5, and two. So now we'll rewire this to go to the timer blocks first. And then we'll also do the same thing over here. Oh yeah, if you want to see these individually too, these two portions are separate. So we will have that go here and here. We'll have that one second and two. I hope my timing's right. I might need to cut these down, but let's just see how this works now. And that's pretty interesting. If we add our uh, our turning mechanism here, gives it another unique look. So yeah, let me show you. I will show you what I mean by it not being able to be like a regular cube. So if I can do this here. Okay, so I've set up this test area to, to kind of show you how this is working and uh, how my cube differs from a regular infinity cube. So we'll go over here to the one that I created. Uh, so as you can see, I have the green block and the green block is like your starting block. So my yellow block over there uh, would represent this uh, green block. And that is because uh, when I created this, I had something like this that connected to my yellow block so that this could function. And in this game, you can delete the blocks when you're done using them and they'll be floating. So that's what's going on over there. So from your starter block, you can actually do hinges uh, off of that and they have to go uh, directional. So the, the white squares here represent the hinges that you can see and then the red squares are the hinges that you can't see so those red would be on the back side uh, so like over here if we go to these four hinges here on the back side I have those two there so now these lines represent how they are connected to each other so it's t say this is my starting block I put a hinge going over to the block here so it's connected in this line so in this way so if i deleted this hinge this block would disappear and this is kind of how it, how it's set up so these are all connected going down a straight line and then from here it branches off and stops in the corners like so where on a normal infinity cube you would have to link them all together which uh, isn't really possible in this game. So here's the starting block that we would have had. And then our hinges go in the direction of this line here. And they would follow around. But at some point, you'd have to hook them back together. 
which which doesn't work. Uh, I don't have an X, but I would I would put an X at any point if I wanted to do that, it wouldn't work. So, for example, if we took these two hinges here and we push this button, it would move with it, but it's not technically connected. So if I wanted to move this piece to fold over this one, you can see once we hook that up, it's not technically connected. So that doesn't quite work, which is why I had to change my hinge locations so that uh, from my starting block, I could go to endpoints instead of uh, you know not being able to connect them in a full circle. So that's why my infinity cube is a little different from a normal infinity cube. If any of that made any sense at all. <laughs> so, so yeah, I just think this is a pretty cool art piece. I'll probably be putting it, you know, in a base at some point. Um, I might make some some bigger stuff in the future. I can go ahead and turn this on one more time. So yeah, guys, that is that. Uh, I'm definitely probably going to be putting something like this, like this art piece, in one of my bases at some point. Uh, I haven't built any bases yet, but, uh, you know, that's on the to-do list. I definitely need a base. Other than the starting one that's over there somewhere. Actually, I have no idea where it is. But yeah, uh, I just thought this was pretty cool. Thought I'd share it. Um... Also, I have uh, been talking to Khan recently, and he said he wants to get in this game. So uh, I wanted to do a challenge. So Khan, I challenge you to make something cool, I guess. <laughs> I challenge you to make something cool and uh, see if you can, uh, you know, see if you can beat this. You know, just a little friendly competition. So, uh, yeah, guys, definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you'd like to see more of stuff like this in the future. Uh, I've got a few ideas, a couple more projects that I want to work on as far as, uh, you know, cool mechanisms or uh, art projects go. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Oh, yeah, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, set the score for anyone that uh, wants to keep track. So, cool things made in Starship Evo. Dapper 1, Con 0. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to smash that like button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.